Okay, if you have not tried this question, I would appreciate if you would actually try this on your own and see if you can come up with an equation to represent this situation. Uh, we're talking about the volume of air in lungs during normal breathing. So it is kind of a, a cyclical, it is a cyclical pattern here. Um, I've given you the minimum amount of uh, volume of air and then the maximum. So from there, you should be able to calculate the midpoint, which would be your axis of your curve, and you can get your amplitude from that. Um, it's talking about taking four seconds for one breath. So, so that's the time for one cycle happening there. All right, so based on that, the midpoint would give us the axis of the curve. So if I add the 2200 plus the 2800 and divide by 2, we're going to get 2500 for our axis of the curve. The difference between 2800 and 2500 is 300, so that's our amplitude. Okay, so you should have an amplitude of 300, axis of the curve, and uh, t equals zero is the start. So that would be at the minimum. So your lungs are empty, and then you take a breath, fill up the lungs, and then you exhale it, and that's a time of four seconds happening there. And in terms of a k value, we're looking at 360 divided by the period. So 360 divided by four uh, should give us 90 there. So k is going to be 90. Now, because this starts at a minimum value, I'm going to make that a negative cos uh, curve. So I would get v for volume, and I'll define my variables in a bit here. Uh, based on time t, t will be time in seconds. We're going to have an amplitude of 300. Uh, I'm going to use a negative, the reflection, to begin the cos at the lowest point. We're going to have 90 as our k value. And t, we don't have to worry about a phase shift when we use the coast with that. And our axis of the curve is at the 2500 mark. All right, so I'll type in my let statements to go with that. Okay, so I have my let statements, V representing the volume of air in the lungs in millimeters, milliliters, and T represents the time in seconds for our breath. How much air is in the lungs at 20 seconds? We're just going to evaluate that. Uh, the volume is what we're trying to figure out. The volume at 20 seconds. So we're just going to replace the T with 20 and throw that in the calculator and it will give us the volume, which should be somewhere between uh, the 2200, uh, 2200 and 2800 milliliters. All right. Okay, when I put that in my calculator, I got 2200 milliliters of air in the lungs at 20 seconds. Now, how would the equation change if the person breathes more rapidly? So we're breathing more quickly, um, depending... Uh, if that's the only thing that is changing, the fact that we're breathing more rapidly, what it means is we're taking less time for one uh, breath to come in and out. So our period would change for that. So I might increase, uh, decrease the period from four seconds to maybe three seconds or two seconds. So that's going to change our K value. And we'll assume that everything else stays the same. So let's say, uh, so an example, there's multiple answers to this, but let's say the period is now, um, period decreases. So we could change that, for example, as I said, to maybe three seconds. Um, for example, it could go to three seconds instead of four. So our K now will change to be 360 divided by three. And that is 120, so the equation could look like, and again, this is not the only answer to this. It's uh, open-ended. We could have multiple different answers for this, um, depending on how more rapidly they are breathing and assuming that they're not taking more air in at the same time or emptying their, their lungs further. All right, how would the equation change if a person takes bigger breaths? So this is meaning we are like increasing the amount of volume of air that's coming in. So when you get running, you're usually breathing more deeply to, to bring more oxygen in to provide oxygen to our cells in our body. So provide an example of the new equation. So taking bigger breaths, we're going to assume that... Um, the max volume increases. I'm not so sure our min volume, like I'm not sure that that would get any less. I'm not really sure on the, the biology on that, but let's just assume it's the max volume that would increase. 
So, for example, maybe now we're taking in 3,200 milliliters of air as our max. So that's going to change a couple of things. It's going to change where that axis of the curve is. It's also going to change the amplitude. So we could get a new A value. Um, and we could get a new axis of the curve for that. Okay, so between 2200 and 3200, that's 1,000 units, 1,000 milliliters. Half of that would be 500, so our amplitude's going to be 500. So 500 up from 2200 would be the 2700 for the axis of the curve. Add another 500 to the 2700. That's when we get to the 3200 that we defined. So our equation, assuming um, we could go back to the four seconds for our breath uh, time frame, what's changing now is that we would have a minus 500 instead of the minus 300. We still have cos, assuming that we're starting at uh, an empty empty lungs, well, relatively empty lungs, um, that my K, I could go back to the 90 for the four seconds, and then the value on the end would be 2,700. All right, let's look at the last example. The pendulum swinging back and forth. This reminds me of a person sitting on the swing kind of question. So we've got the pendulum, a pendulum, think grandfather clock and the, the big uh, pendulum. This is a, an extra big pendulum. It's taking 12 seconds to make one complete swing. So that way and then back again will take 12 seconds. Um, it's swinging 105 centimeters, again big pendulum, on either side of the rest position. So the rest position would be hanging straight down, so perpendicular to, to uh, the horizontal. Um, and it's going 105 centimeters to the left and 105 centimeters to the right of that perpendicular line to the ground. Determine an equation to model the situation if it's at its leftmost position from the rest position when tracking begins. So again, we're, um, I would have uh, displacement being zero would be my rest position. I would be at negative 105 centimeters when I'm at the leftmost position and positive 105 centimeters when we're at the rightmost position. So I'm looking at my sinusoidal curve uh, doing something like that. So that's a period of 12 seconds. So that's going to be 12 here, 6 for the midpoint in the middle of that. Uh, this would be negative 105, positive 105 up here. And we can come up with an equation for that. Again, we need to have some let statements, but um, we could put D for displacement, T for time. We're looking at an amplitude of 105. I'm going to use negative cos because we start at the minimum. Then I don't have to worry about a phase shift. A K value, 360 divided by, by the period, which is 12. Uh, 360 divided by 12. I should know that in my head, but I'm really tired. That's going to be 30. So we're going to get 30t. No phase shift required if I use the negative cos. And we uh, don't even have to worry about a, I mean, we could put plus zero on the end of that, but we don't have to worry about a horizontal, or sorry, a vertical translation up or down on that. Our k just equal, or our q on the end just equals zero. All right, so I'll define my, my variables. And there I have magically typed in my let statements. Determine the location of the pendulum after one second. So we're just inserting a time of one. So we're evaluating the displacement or the distance uh, it is from the vertical at one second. Put that into the calculator. Uh, 30 times one would just be a 30. And we are going to get Oops, let me try that again. I get a negative 90.9, so almost 91, and the negative's telling us that it's to the left of the rest position or the vertical. And then determine the pendulum, uh, when the pendulum, so solving for time, when it uh, will be at the rest position during the first swing. So, um, I actually could figure that out based on some symmetry. I know the rest position. If I look at the graph that I've drawn, the graph that I've drawn here, the rest position is when the displacement is zero here and here. So by symmetry, 
um, this would have to be 3 and this would have to be 9. So I can get that directly from the graph. Um, I could also sub in a 0 for my displacement and solve that equation for the time. So that's going to be 30 times t. Um, I could divide both sides by 150. I get 0 equals the cos of 30 t, inverse function cos on 0, and we get 90. 90 equals 30 t, or by the, um, the what I know about cosine, we know that cos will also be equal to 0 at 270 degrees. 270 equals 30 t. Um, I think it's easier to see it from the graph up above. Divide both sides by 30, you're going to get your two answers of 3 seconds and 9 seconds. So this will be a 3 equals t, and this will be 9 equals t. So either way, um, look at the original graph we have up above, or the um, use the algebraic method. So I've added in my, le my therefore statements for both of those questions, and hopefully that makes sense.